about to talk about here. <laughs> but being patient enough to know, okay, calm down, first off, gather yourself, and this is a beautiful opportunity for a teaching. Mm -hmm. Right? So, just so that y'all know what I'm talking about, um, it's September of 2018. And we are in Disney. Not a great place to be doing this. Like, just... right. Yes, I think, but I think the being in Disney probably helped you for me. This is true. Yes, this is true. I would have been sitting at the house. I'd have probably got the work. Well, I don't know. I don't know. There's a better chance that you would have. Yeah. Yes, but we're at Kadani Village. They're right. Animal Kingdom Lodge, and um, we're talking about this. Uh, this is at the height of the Colin Kaepernick mm -hmm. situation. Yep. And we're we're talking about amongst all of our friends and Dale proceeds to say, you know, like all of this is going on and I feel like you don't care enough. I did. I feel, I feel like you do not care enough about this issue and you're not basically angry enough. Yeah. Like for my liking. Cause that's what, that was when I was in my, I was angry. You were in your cage stage. Yes. You was just trying to, everybody just, don't get this work yeah you sneeze wrong you racist like <laughs> like everybody racist yes um and so i was like in my head I'm like are you kidding me yeah so the light has gone off in his head for the past you know year or so because he's seeing things that are happening with ryan and he wants to tell me something that i've been living my entire life yeah where i my mom is in tears telling me that I can't afford to get to allow my emotions to get the best of me. Basically because the color of my skin. Yeah. Um, he's telling me he's never been profiled, he's never been walking down from school, walking down the street from school and stopped and yeah. searched. And all of these things are going on in my head and I hold my tongue. Yeah, you said I'm nothing. Like, I, I literally said nothing. I didn't agree or disagree. I just didn't say anything because anything that was going to come out of my mouth was not going to be good. And about two weeks later, yeah, I brought it back up. Very and gracefully we, still, yes. I want to point out. Like you handled what, it. What, what did I what did I say? Well, I don't remember the exact words, but you just said I first thing you said was, you know I love you. What anytime I was like, Oh, I messed up and I don't know and and I don't remember um, verbatim, but basically you reminded me of where you've come from and, and you basically said, um, being angry is not what God's called me to do. And that's not going to help change anything. And, and you challenged me. Why am I angry? Is it for the gospel or is it selfish? And I thought that that was very, um, powerful moment for me. Cause what, what, to add on to that, um, leading up to that conversation, <clears throat> I think we'd had a con well <clears throat> one. You know, there was different people that had been beaten or shootings, and and I'm trying to wrap my head around that. Um, you've got me reading books. I'm watching movies, uh, which you know, and so like I'm I'm just being educated in things, and um, and I and I remember just before this conversation was the conversation where um. Um, Russell Westbrook apologized. No, he didn't apologize. A, a announcer got fired for telling him uh, something racist. Yes. Um, and and I'm my stance was he should know better. And you're like, you know, like maybe he didn't know. Like you're taking a very like, like I, yeah. yeah, I don't know that he should have lost his job. And I'm and and like so I felt like and so in my heart I'm like. Why? Like, you're showing me all this, and 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 I just took it wrong. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, and I, and I think you even said I am not showing you my life for you to be on my side. I'm showing you because as a white man, I need you to help me change the world. Yeah. <clears throat> but I, I can say this. If you would have came at me in the paint, I'd have been done. Yeah. 
Like I'd have, I'd have been scared to ever bring it up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I did I did come at you kind of hard. Yeah, but it was it was in a lot of grace and in a lot of truth. I could have left out some things that I said, but you know. No, I I think it was warranted. To I think I know who I am, and I yeah. needed to be reminded. Um, you can have. I mean, the truth is, I can have all the empathy I want. At the end of the day, I'm still not in your shoes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I think what's important with this topic um, is the distinction because for for all parties, all ethnicities, right? Um, we take a ethnic pride standpoint, and I think we need to take a ethnic value That's good. standpoint. Yes, um, ethnic pride is bathed in superiority and prejudice, right? Ethnic value uh, recognizes the creative genius of God's Imago Dei. Right. And being created in his image and likeness. Um, but all of us have a sense of ethnic pride in us, but it, it needs to be ethnic value. Right. Standpoint. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think the biblical approach, this is really, this is the only reason why. Um, on top of a, a new heart, but it's basically what I see in scripture. Um, why I have this approach is it, it stems from not from me, um, but it's like from the Bible. Right. And that it starts at the Bible. Right. And then it broadens out. Right. Um, to our relationship. And the reality is, is that if we don't respond biblically, uh, we will allow ideology to supersede theology right so the idea of what we're supposed to be like the the idea um basically a social gospel approach yeah yeah like where we're, we're talking about all of these social issues but we're not getting to the heart of right jesus is um will allow that it's and it's easy it's easy to see what's going on see what happens and us to be like, we got to change the world, not with Jesus. Right. But we got to change these laws. We got to change this. We right. got to change that. Um, and I'll say that you would do a good job of reminding whether it's, you know, the hot topic of the moment, statues or this or that. And you, you're very quick to go, that's not, that's not what we're after. Yeah. Like that's not, those are sidebar things to a way bigger issue. Absolutely. Um, but I think the, for whatever reason, the first book of the Bible that I read uh, was Galatians. Mm. I have no idea why. Um, that was after I got saved. Um, I read the book of Galatians. I don't know if I <laughs> opened it up and just started reading. I don't, I don't know what happened, actually. Um, but in Galatians 2, there's this conflict that Paul is addressing. Uh, and it's him confronting Peter. Um, about his racism, yeah, basically. Um, and this is like two monsters, two titans. This is Ali Frazier, yeah. This is Pacquiao Mayweather, you know, yeah. like this is you know, Tyson Holyfield, like two monsters going at it. Um, because so much so, like, you think about it, the book of Acts, uh, Acts chapter 1 to 12 is basically centered around Peter. 13 through 28 is centered around Paul. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you have Peter acting a certain type of way around Gentiles. Right. He eating bacon and he doing all that stuff around Gentiles. And then around Jews, he's not even associating himself. With them. Right. And Paul says that you are out of step with the gospel. Mm. You acting like this? is out of step with the gospel. He didn't say uh, your conduct is damning to hell. Right. He said it's out of step. So I think the Greek word is uh, orthopudin um, with out of step. And that's yeah. where we get the word orthopedic, our English word orthopedic from. Um, but he's saying that you are out of alignment Yeah. with, with the gospel. Which um, is important because it means it can be corrected. Absolutely. 
it's not just you are you are damned to hell for acting this way, um, but it's not okay. Right. We got to figure this out. Um, and the reality is, is that when it comes to this matter, if we are not focused on the realities of the cross, the realities of the gospel, um, it could easily become, well, you're damned to hell because, you know, you're, you're a lost cause. You're from Mississippi. You're from this, or you're, all of these different things that you've seen, all of these different things that you're, you've experienced. Um, no, nah, I'm not going to waste my time with you. Right, because I mean, because and you would agree, you've seen this actually happen to me multiple times. People that know I'm from Mississippi will say something off the cuff. Yeah, you'll raise an eyebrow, and then they'll literally look at me and go, "You're from Mississippi, you understand." You know I mean. And I'm like, "Don't, don't, yeah, I understand where I was born and raised, but don't, don't put me on your team. Yeah, like I, 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 we are not in step. <laughs> like, um, I, I get what you're saying, but no, we don't rock like that. Right, right, um. What do you think your fear is around this topic? Around this topic, <clears throat> one uh, um, as a and and I think uh, I think it's a great question for our people too yep. to answer. You know, what is your fear for me um, early on? And if it wasn't for you, um, not just you. There's others. There's been other people that I feel like have been open. Um, Jarrell Peak Millie comes to mind that has mm-hmm. been willing to have conversation with me. Um, Trey Hamilton and 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 Quan and some of these young men that were even teenagers. Not that we were having the conversation, but just trusting me. Yeah. In that kind of place where I knew I had to grow, but I think my fear uh, was if I say something that comes across racist, and I'm done. Yeah. Like you're one and done. One and done. Right. Um. Which let's just be real, and we can tell we can tell the funny story. Like I did not start out well with your family. Oh. <laughs> Like at all, no. Uh, but but no. honestly, that night rang true for me because it was like, um, it's gonna be okay. Like like I'm not saying that nobody left that night going, that's your best friend X. Like so I mean, so let y'all know, um, we're at my house for my thirtieth birthday. No, no, this was just a hangout night. Like your th- your thirtieth birthday. Oh yeah, 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 it was yeah, just yeah. a. Just, like you just inv- this is the first time you yeah. like I'd met most of them at different. Yeah. singular spots but this is the first time like your whole group's getting together yeah you came and i wanted to come i was like yeah. i want to see y'all and like your family environment like i think it was like around christmas because you time. were range was there yeah. too yeah, yeah was range there. was there because yeah, he i had to cook the burgers cook, yeah. cook the burgers <laughs> yeah. Got scared. I think it was, yeah i did too <laughs> yeah but i think it was around christmas time whenever y'all do the different houses yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Or whatever yeah so we are at my house Mm-hmm. And you know my family likes to sing, so my sister she's singing, um, and we're talking about different songs, and she begins to talk about um, her boyfriend at the time, Larry. Yeah. He has a deep voice. Yes, and she and said he, he can sing well. He can sing. He can sing good. You know some um, Barry White. Uh, so we're trying to get him to sing. You know the Silent Light Temptation song. Um, and we're singing different songs and then Dale, for whatever reason, I, I have, it's not a great excuse, but I do have a reason for whatever reason <laughs> he starts to sing wait <laughs> in the water. I did. I did. Wait in I'm the not water. In. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing it. So everything stops there's music playing the there's, music there's probably stops. what would you say there's 30 people there eh, not that much but there was like because like, there's card games going over right, right, here right, right. people around the bar where right, we were yeah. people in the day playing video games. 20 people and everybody yeah. stopped everything and i'm still trying to like do i do i keep singing keep like singing? I, I knew maybe i sound good so maybe I, I should keep yeah singing. and i'm like I, I knew i was like i'm not doing something right yes but i had no idea what I was doing wrong. And then what did my sister say to you? She looked at me and said, why are you singing a slave song to us? And I, and, and, and I literally remember sitting there thinking, cause your brother was standing behind me yeah, yeah. and he is a massive of a man. <laughs> and I literally was like, well, you know, I, I'm going to go see Jesus today. 
and he's gonna look at me and like, what were you thinking? Yeah. Like, and 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 I I didn't have a, I didn't even have a response because I yeah. one I had no idea. So here's how the song got in my head. If you've ever seen this it's an old movie, there's a movie called Cadence. It's got um, Sheen, Charlie Sheen in it. He's in military prison with a bunch of black men, and they sing this song. Which now that I think about it, they're in prison and they're singing the song as they go on a work project, which yeah. is should have been telling. Yeah, and he wasn't singing. He wasn't singing. He wasn't singing. Um, and so, I, I don't, I don't, I don't even know. Like I just sang. Like we're singing Christmas songs. Yeah, like we're, we're not even like not even old like swing low sweet like none, none, none of that nothing and, and go there. I went way back and she said it and. I had nothing. Yeah. Like I just, and, and luckily for everything your brother just said, just laughed. Yeah. He said something, but he laughed and now it took a deep mm -hmm. sigh of relief. And um, then your brother-in-law made fun of you because he's the one that's usually said something not smart. Yeah. And it was me. It was me. That was, yeah, that was, I was just thinking, okay, <laughs> can I hold them off long enough for them to get away alive? <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't think I can. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was like the first time. First time. First time. You know, didn't even. First. Work. But yeah, that was a a, a great great time. Not yeah, really. But I mean, that goes back to what I said. Like, I think a huge fear from my perspective is that as you try to dive in, um, to these conversations, the fear of doing it wrong. Yeah. getting labeled racist and then you're just done yeah like it, and uh because i mean culturally that's kind of where we're at yeah um it, so so either you so i feel like our because of that fear we take a very defensive role like i'll say nothing yeah um because it's a it's a safer place to be yeah um yeah that would be a huge fear to me yeah. or or just and I, I would even say on um this ignorant mindset of that couldn't be in me i i would argue um that's a dangerous place to be yeah. for anyone anybody and so like that leads to failure mm -hmm. so yeah that would be my 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 biggest um fear on this topic just yeah. having the courage to be able to have the conversation and not question but i also think that goes back to community like i think we had mm -hmm. community for a while before i Started asking the questions, singing to you, <laughs> those kind of things. <laughs> like, yeah, it was a while. Yeah, before. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If you would have been able to recover <laughs> early on. No, Woo, no, 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 no. I don't know. Ain't hey, from Mississippi. Yeah, you know, it's just it, it did not. It was not. It was it not a just, good good look. It was not a good. Been, this wouldn't have been good. It wasn't good look. No. Mm -mm. So what about you? Fears around um, this topic. Um. Honestly, that sometimes I. Feel like I'm doing it wrong. Hmm. Like, in some cases, I feel like um, for my white brothers and sisters that still like look at me in skepticism. Hmm. Um, and then in, for my black brothers and sisters, it's like, oh, you're a sellout. Oh, type of yeah, thing. yeah. So, in so many words, feeling not good enough for either side no i feel that i I feel like um since and i'm not white enough obviously for white people and then not black enough for black people and so i, I feel that because i feel like um since over the years i've been told especially in the recent years quite often that i have forgotten who i am or forgotten that i'm white and lost a lot of people yeah. um, which is which hurts when it's someone that you care deeply about and because you've changed your perspective on this like we're done yeah so i think many times i'm like am i am i doing it right yeah or am i doing it wrong or is this a a right and wrong even situation like this is just my convictions and what i see in scripture this is the approach yeah no i you know so it's like it it's because i i, I would even argue that you do a great job of even calling out um, black men and women saying they're wrong. That is not, that's not okay. Yeah. Um, 
Absolutely. And I, I love being black. You know, like I've been asked this before. Um, what time period would I like to live in? <laughs> and it's like, as a black man? Yeah. I'm good with right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you I mean, know, that, like, but I'm, that leads, I'm, that I'm leads okay. to a lot of, I mean, we don't have to jump in that today, but that leads to a lot of our, like a, something for people to just, just a nugget to think about. If you post, and, I, and I'm not saying this makes you racist at all, yeah. but if you post, I miss the way it was back when, um, I'm pretty sure you're going to be white posting that. Yeah. I don't know that very many minorities ever post that comment. I, I have not met one. Um, and Black man. I'm not going to pick any other era. You, you're not going one year back. Let's keep going forward. We're going to keep going forward. Yeah. You know? But I, I love being black. Yeah. I love my culture. I love my hair. Um, I love the way that we, I mean, and I'm talking about my island culture. You right. Know, my family. You know, I I love everything about it. So it's not a matter of me being imperialized. Um because I think this way, no, this is, I feel as though uh, when I look at scripture, this is the approach. No, I, I, and I would agree with that. I think that you do a phenomenal job of being comfortable at who you are in whatever environment you're in. Yeah. Um, um, all the time. Yeah. Um, things that you think that you're, you're encouraged by centered around this topic. What are you encouraged by? So are we talking specifically me or in general? Um, let's go in general. Okay. Um, I do think I do think there's been some move moves that are positive. Um, first of all, anytime, and this is just a truth bomb for all of us. Anytime we're waiting for the world to change things that are sin and it's not godly people, it's going to be done in, irrationally. Which is why we fight for things that really don't matter. Like, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to get in this debate about should Confederate statues be left mm. up and this and that. Like, but I'm just saying, when you leave people that are looking for praise from man and not God, and you do one thing that gets praise, you're going to do a lot more. Yeah, like that's just reality. Uh, but I do think that um, as a whole, um, I'm encouraged by. Um, it seems that uh, from uh, an entertainment value. There's more people um, educating people um, from a minority perspective correctly. Yes. Um, movies, TV shows, yeah. uh, music. Uh, um, I think all of that has gotten better um, as far as people being more aware and it not being a one-sided, um, incorrect way of looking at it. Um, I think that there have been changes, uh, whether not say that they haven't had opposition but like just for me being from mississippi a uh, huge encouragement was the change of the flag um you know it what it did have the confederate flag in it i am i am thankful that that's no longer a thing yeah. um because even though i struggle with a lot of things um from mississippi i am thankful that that's where god has me from like yeah. I, I love to sip my favorite team is Ole miss like i love i love there's things that i, I just love about it and i and and i want to be able to to be proud of it. Um, right. And I think that there's things that they're doing um, to change. And I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, encouraging on, uh, for me, like, uh, um, and I don't know if me, you've ever, me and you have ever talked about this. Uh, I, <clears throat> I think the most encouraging moment for me when I realized, okay, I'm really getting this, like understanding um, from an empathetic uh, uh, perspective. It was, it was one evening you were sick. I don't know. I mean, you get sick often, but you were sick. It's been a while back, and your wife went to. I don't know if she ever told you this. She went. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. She went to Dollar General. Mm. Um, someone there was very ugly to her. Yeah. Um, and she, she was at her full hawk. Yeah, dreads basically. And and had the kids. Um, and she was very upset, and she called me for nothing else but to be able to vent and to have encouragement and be loved on, and that that meant. A lot, not not because I think I'm a natural encourager, mm -hmm. but it meant a lot that she realized that I'm in a place now where I understand where she's coming from. Yeah, um, and to feel as a safe place in this area was huge for me. Yeah. Um. So. Um. Yeah. I think. I think that you know that would be my encouragement stuff. Yeah. What about you? Um. 
I would say that I feel as though that um, more awareness, uh, more education is happening uh, when it comes to this topic. Um, I think that even though it's a hard topic, I feel as though I find myself in more conversation centered around this topic I would than agree. ever before. I agree. Um, and it's not from a standpoint of let's debate. Right, right. It's from a standpoint of I want to learn. You know what I'm saying? Basically. Um, so I think I, I'm super encouraged by that. And going back to my fear, I think that's my discouragement or what I'm discouraged by. Um, it's like I often question myself, am I doing it right? Mm. Because um, it seems as so I'm not good on either side. I'm just somewhere in the middle that, no, you can have him. No, we don't want him. You can have him. But, but would you argue, um, I think that's how people looked at Jesus. I mean, me to I was like, don't, don't, uh, don't get a big head like no, you do. I didn't want but that. No, but, I'm just, but, I I think, want but that. I think in this area, but I, honestly, I'm, I'm being honest, like in this area, I think, I think people want you to pick a side and I think that's what people wanted of Jesus. Yeah. And for you to be understanding where people are falling short um, and still be behind these people, but not rock to the point where it's going to be sinful. I think that's hard for people to digest. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I know, like I said, there's, you know, there's, you know, I don't want to get on here and tear anyone down, but there's multiple people that have been a part of my life for years that have nothing to do with me anymore solely off of the, idea that i adopted a black child yeah. um and watching you not lose sight of the gospel when people basically dismiss you has helped me because i mean you know we ain't gonna get in this today but you've walked in on me in many heated conversations with many people oh lord um yeah and and the cool part is through that some of these people like i'm still really close to like i have learned we can disagree and I can still love you. Mm -hmm. Like, cause, and I think that's the biggest, if I was going to give a nugget is we have to stop treating someone that did something or said something racist. Like there's no return from that. Yeah. Like that doesn't help anyone. Yeah. Like if they don't get it on the first time, hopefully they'll get it on the 10th time yeah. or the hunt. Like, like, cause I think you would like, I remember as pa co-pastors of a church, I'll let you tell the story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody was talking. Ten and, minutes before church started. Ten minutes before church started. And um, this person was complaining that they got searched in an airport. They got pulled to the side uh, by what is it, TSA. And they had to be searched. And this person said, and they pulled me to the side and did that to me. And there was a black guy with dreads in a backpack that was standing right behind me, and they didn't do that to him. Which you have dressed, and you had and a backpack. I had a backpack on. Um, but the cool... And whenever <laughs> I happened to be standing behind this person. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, it was uh, this person was talking about me. Yeah. You know, it was just like, dang, ow. Yeah. All right. And, and the, but the cool part, the, the, the praise per se of you is because you saw me, because I was ready, like, mm -hmm. we going to... Pounce. We gonna have this right now. Yeah. That was I was that was still caged. That was like 2019. Yeah, it was still yeah, little yeah. and and you grabbed me and told me no, and you said because there's nothing that's gonna glorify God to right now right to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And you told me that is not my place to have like yeah. that is yours. And I thought that was really awesome. So, yeah. but the cool part is you, not that. I'm not saying it doesn't leave a lasting mark. I'm not even saying it didn't hurt you, but you still every opportunity to love that person. Absolutely. Sure. So that that's the cool part. Yeah. And I think that's where we get it wrong. If we want change, there has to be patience, grace from everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, for sure. Uh, one thing that you want to leave everybody with in regards to this topic, and this won't be the only time that we talk no, about No, no, this, this, this was, was more of an overarching, general absolutely uh, standpoint, but something that you want to leave. 
So I'm going to speak. How about I just speak as a white man? There you go. That might be the best way to go. My yeah. my overarching encouragement would be um, don't think you know what you really don't know. Like there's always an area to learn. Even I think that's the biggest thing I've done in the last few years is allow people to share their story, their truth. Even if I disagree, um, it gives it gives me a better perspective of the overarching thing that we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, and, and so for me, like I'm always learning. Uh, I want to learn. I want to grow. And it's not for me. It's for the gospel. Yeah. Like that's yeah. that's like I cannot say that I am walking in step with God and pursuing sanctification if all I want to do is be around white people. Yeah. Like that that's, that's not how it works. Yeah. So yeah, that would be mine. That's good. Um I just want to end with um talking about the origin of the word Christian. Mm. Um and what that came from. So you have in Acts 7 you have Stephen preaching and he is young, he's zealous, um, and he's preaching the gospel. Talking about the death and resurrection of Jesus. And he's preaching to a lot of Pharisees. Mm -hmm. They don't like it. Long story short, they ended up killing him. Uh, when they killed him, it caused a great dispersion of people because they were scared. Yep. And everybody scattered, everybody takes off. Uh, one of the places that they scattered to was Antioch. And Antioch, um, and Paul reference, references this in Galatians, um, it was an incredible melting pot of a city, right? Um, it was kind of at the geographical, um, economical, cultural, racial, uh, and religious crossroad, All right? right? Um, in this section of the Roman Empire. You had Africans, you had Palestinians, you had Jews, you had, you had Greeks. Um, and this was a place where they worshipped a lot of false deities. But then you have, that was Acts 7. They disperse, Antioch comes. It's Acts 11. And I just want to read this part. In Acts 11, verse 20, it says, But there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also, preaching the Lord Jesus. Um, and then, so you, you have this melting pot of Palestinians, Jews, Greeks, um, and then you have the gospel preached, and all of these people begin to respond to it. And then you had unbelievers being economical, cultural, racial um, division actually become unified. That's good. And they're like, we can't call them Palestinians. Right. We can't call them Africans. We can't call them Jews. We can't call them Greeks because they're doing life together. They're worshiping together. They're sharing meals with each other. And you can't define them as Jews. You can't define them as Greeks. You can't define them as Africans. You can't define them as wealthy. You can't define them as poor because they're all doing life together. We got to figure out what to call them. They're following Christ, so they're Christians. That's good. So the word Christian was birthed out of diversity from unbelievers seeing how they loved each other. That's good. So what are we doing? I, I was going to say, that's good. Not good for us, but it's good. What are, what are we doing? If unbelievers, the word Christian is birthed from diversity. Yeah. And not even from within our camp. But from Christian or from unbelievers on the outside looking, looking at mm. the way that they love each other. That's good. What are we doing? That's Can good. non believers say the same thing about us? That's good. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a man, that's good. Like, I feel like an easy question to ask yourself is when is the last time you sat down with someone of a different race and asked them to uh, just basic questions of, how do you feel about me? Yep. It's easy for us to be integrated on the surface, but segregated in our heart. That's good. Ooh, that's good. It's easy. It's easier. So does everybody who, who we're around, does everybody look like, act like, think like, vote like 
us. Mm. This has been Culture on Tap. Mm -hmm. Um, And on behalf of my brothers, Dale and Range, uh, we love y'all and we will see y'all next time. Culture on Tap is sponsored by Houston Radio Platinum, playing the best classic hits. You can download the Houston Radio Platinum app. It's in your app store or just ask Alexa to play Houston Radio Platinum.